Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And today's guest is going to teach us all about multifamily. But before we talk to our guest, I'd be remiss if I didn't properly introduce my co-host, the brain, the professor, your flight school Sherpa, Scott Todd, from scotttodd.net, landmodo.com. If you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, postingdomination.com forward slash the land geek learn anything about anything investor ninjas.com scott todd how are you i'm great mark how are you pulse is normal respiration is fine i'm excited to talk to agostino pintus so if you know about agostino he is a former inc 500 technology chief so he's a geek just like us scott and uh he had great success until he failed in spectacular fashion that kicked off his 10 dark years. Um, with no direction, financially broken, he was introduced into large real estate deals that literally changed the entire course of his life. He ended up building a real estate portfolio, uh, generally general partnering on over $40 million of deals in 28 months. And today he helps people get into the real estate deals of their own and build their own wealth and I've actually been on this podcast, the Bulletproof, uh, Bulletproof Cashflow Podcast. Augustino Pintus, how are you? Man, I'm awesome. Awesome. How are you guys doing? We're, we're great. We're great. So glad to have you on the podcast. So let's go back to those dark years. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's start there and then how you broke through. Well, you know, I mean, before that, it was all corporate America stuff, right? So I grew up as a techie, like a tech geek, right? I used to coding and uh, all that stuff when I was like nine, 10 years old, when I'm a little Commodore 64, right? That's where I got my, my start on that thing. And I knew that when I was a kid programming stuff, I was like, I'm gonna be an entrepreneur. I'm gonna, I'm gonna create my own software company. I'm gonna be that, that guy, you know? And I had these, these visions of grandeur of owning my own company and, and working in tech. That was my thing. But like most things, you know, you have your, you know, you have your parents, you have society, you have all these things weighing down on you. You know what you need? You need a job. You don't need to be an entrepreneur. You need to go work a 40 hour job to go work for some boss. that doesn't want to be there either. And that's what you need to be doing. So I kind of fell into that and I had, had some good success though. Right. I, I ended up, uh, rising through the ranks. I worked for some really bad companies, worked for some really great companies and built, built some success in working for other groups, you know, and uh, a couple of Inc. 500 companies, C-level executive was doing okay. Everything was going awesome until one day it doesn't, you know, and that's when uh, you're, you know, the CEO of the company, even though I made the guy a multimillionaire decides he's going to change directions with the little air quotes and uh, hands me the box, pack up your stuff, get lost, you're done. And I'm sure that there's many people that are listening to this right now that have been in the same situation. Maybe not IT, but I'll tell you what, you hang your hat, you hang your, the future of your family and that's depending on you to make money on some other person that doesn't care anything about you or your, your family or whatever it is that's going on in your life, right? And that's what happened to me. And when I did that, and it, it really how should I put it? We really put a high degree of self-worth on what we are, what we're about with our job, right? So when your boss tells you after building all the success that you're no longer any good, it, it really puts you in a tailspin. That's what it did for me. You know, it made me believe that I'm basically worthless. I, you know, if I can't work, I am, and I can't work at this company, I must, something must be wrong with me. And that's where this whole 10 dark years kicked off. And I mean, man, I'll tell you, it was, it was some, some very, very rough times. Uh, uh, because you're at the sea level, it's it, it, sometimes for most people, uh, it, it, you're getting paid so much money that those jobs are not exactly plentiful, right? Like, it isn't like there's a whole ton of sea level CIO jobs out there. Uh, there are jobs. It just takes a high degree more effort and there's a whole lot of more competition. And you know, after months and months and months of searching for jobs and sending out 500 resumes a week, 500 resumes a week, you had an email address, you're getting a resume and you're going to look at it. <laughs> I was doing that for, for years, man, going from company to company to company, crappy companies, mediocre companies, companies that, that say they want to do great things, but never did. They, they saw my pedigree and want to bring me on to help them. And then they never went anywhere for years. 
wasting my life trying to do all this stuff until one day I was speaking to a friend of mine who told me about real estate and real estate syndication. Now, up until this point, I've been done, I've been doing single family homes and stuff like that. I knew about real estate and I, and I was very familiar with it, but I didn't know about multifamily real estate. I didn't know how those things worked. I didn't know about syndication. And uh, about three and a half, four years ago, a friend of mine told me about it. And I'm like, I, I could do that. And that's what I'm going to do. I committed, I, I sold everything I had and I went all in on this whole syndication concept, right? Uh, I, I had a few houses left from going through all those dark years, trying to live off of all that. And uh, you know what? It's uh, when I committed to doing my multifamily gig, that's when everything changed, you know? And then I went through self-improvement Read, I started reading books again. I started really building up my mindset, getting in front of the right people, partnering with the right people, talking to brokers, doing everything it took to start building what we have today. And that is, uh, I've GP'd on, on, on over $40 million of deals at this point. And uh, I've, I've, just, I've just locked up a, a contra <laughs> under contract a, a historical building in downtown Cleveland that is going to be three times as much as what, as what I currently have today in terms of net worth. It's going to change everything. It's going to be huge. It's going to be huge, man. Wow. Wow. Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? Uh, I mean, there's a lot to un, uh, unpack there, right? You know, like the, the one thing that, that, you know, I, that kind of stuck with me there, Mark, is that oftentimes, you know, we, we follow the traditional route, which is go get a job with a company, you know, get that, get that education, go get the job with the company. And, you know, I mean, I experienced a similar thing, right? Like also in tech is you're there, you're, uh, you're, you're working your way up the corporate ladder. Like for me, I always, I, I joke, but like, I looked around the room and I'm like, the CEOs are, our sales are up. 50% and everybody's like, yay. And I'm like, these people don't really care about this. I don't care about this. And I'm a VP. And like, how do these people care? It's a lie. No one cares because no one wants to be there. And then, right. then what happens is, so first of all, admit to yourself, you don't want to be there. Like, that's the first thing. And if you want to be there, cool. But like, I don't think that people really want to be there. You want to be doing like what, what we're doing, like just living. The other piece is that we abdicate our security to companies. We abdicate, you know, like here, I'm going to go get this job and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to show up every day and I'm going to get this paycheck and it's going to be reliable. It's going to be safe. You know, like I can't tell you how many times I like in my career, I looked at like a smaller company and my wife would say, Oh, you should really think about a bigger company. They're safer. Are they safer? Like, isn't that a myth? Isn't that like they may have been safer for our parents back in the day today you, you work at the well, like you work at the pleasure of the company. That's the way that the reality works, right? And, and you can be the greatest employee today and then tomorrow, you know, who are you? And, you know, you're right. We put a lot of self-worth into who we are, right? Like, hey, what do you do? You know, first time you meet somebody, you know, it's typically like, hey, who are you? Oh, well, I'm, I'm the CEO of a company or I do this or I'm a real estate investor. Well, that's not who you are right? Like that's what you do, but who are you? Like be who you are. And oftentimes we do put our self worth or our, you know, we, we feel this obligation that we have to support our family through here. So yeah. you, you brought up a lot of, a lot of key points in that piece. And I think that the most important thing is that you do owe it to yourself and you owe it to your family to be the best person you can be. And, you know, it takes a lot of courage to break the, to break the chains that the corp corporations have on us or companies just in general have on us. And I'm very thankful that not everybody wants to be the, an entrepreneur, but man, if you want to be an entrepreneur, go be an entrepreneur, like go be a real estate investor, go do what you want to do. Because I can tell you like l life is much better when you're enjoying what you do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, well, and the part of the thing is though, is that the reason why it's happening in the first place. And, and the thing is, is that, we have all of our cognitive biases that, that it's like our software that runs our, our bodies and our brains, right? And the thing is, is that when the whole concept is counter to how culture says we have to work, it, 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 uh, it releases all of the chemicals in your body to make you feel afraid. And this is a carryover from 10,000 
10,000 years. It's a voice of 10,000 generations, basically, right? Whispering in our ear, oh my God, if you, go, if you leave the cave, a saber-toothed tiger is going to attack you. It's going to jump on your back and eat you alive. That's a kind of, that's, that kind of wiring is still in our brains today. And, we, and because we're, <laughs> we're wired like that, oh my God, I mean, the thought of me quitting my job and taking a chance on myself, that's ludicrous. I'll never do that because a saber-toothed tiger is going to jump on me and kill me. That's the belief, right? And we have the choice. We can either have fear or have faith. You know, and, that's, and it's a story that we have to tell ourselves. Which one of these two things are we going to believe, right? And for the longest time, I was, I was operating in fear, right? Until one day, I had the knowledge, I had the data to make the right decision. And that was to do this. You know, is it easy? Oh, no. By no stretch is it easy. <laughs> it's not easy. But I would certainly do it, I'd take it over any day of, of being unhappy at some, some place where not appreciated or underappreciated and, and, and not really making, not really living to my full potential. That's what it is. Yeah, right. no, no, absolutely. So, Augustino, walk us through your buddy and the syndication model. So, what is a syndication and what did you have to do to get your first deal under your belt? Sure, sure, sure. So, so up until that point, when I was doing the corporate deal, I was very familiar with real estate. And, 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 and so that I was doing like single family homes and duplexes and fourplexes. I, I, I knew about real estate from a very limited point of view, right? I would call a lender up when I wanted to buy more and more houses. And they said, well, you can't buy anymore. I'm like, why is that? Well, because it would go it would rely on my personal credit. And I'm like, well, how, does other, how do other people do it? I don't know. Even the lender had said they had no idea how it was done, right? This is before I knew about syndication. And the thing is, is that in talking to my friend, I posed a question. I see this tall building and I was, he's a real estate attorney. I said, hey, who owns that building? And he says, well, people do. How do they buy it? You syndicate it. Well, how, how does, what is that? He says, it's basically you're pooling other people's money. You're raising other people's money. And they, they invest it along with you if you're putting up any money or you're committing your, your sweat energy or your sweat equity into that deal to make it successful. And then you buy the property. I'm like, oh, well, I mean, I know real estate. So, you know, the, the, it shouldn't be that tough. Well, it's, it's still different, still different enough. I, um, I, I trained a lot. I got my hands in every single real estate book I could find, every single a syndication book I could find at the time. Uh, I got an audio, I got hard copies, I got everything. And I trained like crazy. But uh, what I also committed to is also learning sales, marketing, psychology, some of those things, because a big part of it is, just as I pointed out a second ago, I'm relying on other people. I'm getting them to invest alongside with me, right? So when I'm putting it together a deal, let's say uh, we're going to buy a million dollar property and, um, and I want to raise, so we have to raise $300,000 and keeping it very, very simple right now. So just to keep the math easy, we've got to raise $300,000. So what I'll do is I'll say, okay, uh, okay, Mark, uh, if you, if you invest $300,000 in this deal or a hundred thousand dollars in this deal, I'll give you equity in the deal, right? I'll you know, give you equity in the deal. And in, in exchange for that, you get a, you get a healthy return. You get, and after we refinance this thing and I give you at least 60% of your money back, you still have equity in a deal afterwards. You have, you have equity in perpetuity until we sell this property. So if I, and I like to keep my properties long-term. If I give, if I'm able to swing it, usually I model it out to get more than 60%. But if I'm able to give you $60,000 in two years and the rest of it is all cash flow until the cows come home, it's a pretty good day for Mark, right? Now does Mark need to be an accredited investor? Yes, yeah, so Mark needs to be an accredited investor. Right, right, right. And just so everybody understands, can you kind of define what an accredited investor is? Sure, sure, sure. So that means if, if you're a single person, you have to be earning $200,000 a, a year or more uh, and a million dollars of net worth. So you have those two things, you're a accredited investor. Got it. Okay. And then, uh, but then go ahead. Okay. So now you're going to go to me as an accredited investor. You're going to walk me through a deal. So you've already, it's not a blind pool. It's a, you've already targeted this building or this, this multifamily uh, investment. Yes. And you've already done the numbers on it. And then you go to like me or Scott and say, I'm going to give you a preferred return of 
X amount. So the investor gets their money out first. You're going to get, you're going to participate in the equity piece. So you'll get a percentage of the profits on the back end plus a percentage of the profits on the sale as we increase the value of this investment. So it's, it's very attractive. Exactly. And that's, and that's a great thing about it. And just as you pointed out, yeah. So uh, uh, all the upfront work is done when I'm going off and I'm talking to potential investors as I go, right? I do meetups, I get in front of people, I engage with them and I get them on my list. I get them into the funnel, right? So gauge their interest. Once I know for sure that they, you know, that they're, they're accredited and they can actually put money into a deal. That's when, yes, I, I carry, I, I get a deal under contract. I'll approach them and I say, okay, listen, here's the deal. Here's what I have. I have this building. I have this, this hundred unit property. It's in West Cleveland. It's a solid performer. Let me tell you about how it works. I'll give you an 8% uh, pref, pref on this thing. Uh, any, anything over and above that, we split it 50-50. Uh, I mean, and this is just a no, this is, this is not every deal. This is just a deal, right? We split whatever is over and above that amount, 50-50, between the limited partners and the general partners. The general partners are the ones that actually run the deal. If we manage the deal, the limited partners are limited because they're limited in, in the terms of any legal problems, right? So if, if there's, a, I don't know, someone gets injured on the property, someone decides they're going to come after the, the, the property owners, whatever, the limited partners don't have to deal with it. The, G, the general partners do. So uh, that's, that's another benefit for the limited partners in that the risk is only limited to what they're putting into the property. They don't have any, any legal downside on, on their part and they get all the upside. You know, they have, they get the, 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 the preferred return, they get the equity in the deal, they get all, all that that goes along with it. I mean, for, for a limited partner with, with, the right, with the right deal and the right operators, it's, it's a great windfall. It's a great way to also protect money from taxes as well from Uncle Sam. You know, you're able to take that money and move it from an existing real estate asset. You make a sale, you take that money, roll it into a new property tax-free. It's, it's awesome. You can keep doing that again to the cows come home. As long as it doesn't leave the asset and go into your pocket, it'll just keep growing tax-free. It's a beautiful thing. A 1031 exchange. Essentially. 1031 exchange. Yeah. So Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? Well, I mean, you know, like that's the thing is you got to figure out where you want to be. Do you have more more time than money? Go 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 pull the syndication together. Do you have more money than time? Find find someone who can go and be a good operator for you and deploy your money. I mean, like that's really what it comes down to. Um, you know, I think that I, I think that you have to really figure out where you fit within the within the equation first. And then if, if that's you, if you have more time than money, well then find meetups, go to meetups, go meet people, you know, go, go network, go, go tell people what you want to build, go tell, go paint the vision for people, get their contact information and come back and put it, put the strategy to work. That's, that's it, right? Like you, you fall within these two equations and then figure out where you, where you go. And if you have money to deploy, go find people who can deploy it for you the way that you want to. That's right. That's right. That's right. And, and, and the thing is, though, is that there's a whole lot of upfront work that goes into it, you know, where I'm talking to brokers, I'm active on social media, I'm talking to potential investors, I'm talking to, I'm, I'm talking to students as well, that maybe they want to learn how the business works. I mean, it's a whole line of business over and above actually running the properties that go along with it, you know? So yes, I have property management, but at the same time too, I, I meet with them. I'm, I'm, I'm almost talking to them like every single day about one of these properties. And uh, we do our weekly meetings with them. We go through all of our KPIs. We're, we're, we're looking down at that property in terms of how much income does it have? What's the occupancy at? What sort of issues are there? How do we solve these issues? The whole nine yards. I mean, it takes work to run these assets too. So that comes along with it. But just like you said, Scott, how much time do you have? Do you really want to manage all that? Or do you want to hand it over to a capable operator that knows what the hell they're doing? That's the key. You know, that's the key. Yeah. So uh, Augustino, what's some of the worst advice you see or hear given in multifamily? You know, new people that are getting into the deal, getting into like, I want to get into multifamily and they're getting into it without knowing what they're doing or they're picking up the wrong deal. That's, that's probably the, the biggest thing. So for instance, I, I, I recommend people get into big deals, 
right? Big deals. And it's, it's harder to get into a big deal when you're starting from zero. It's, it's tough. It is tough. I'm not going to say it's easy, right? Uh, why? Well, because you, you really have to bring something to the table. And uh, you also have to network with a, with a lot of other people. If you're afraid of networking with other people, if you're, talk, if you're afraid to talk to other people, then you're going to have an issue. However, other people have your money. Other people have the opportunity that you're looking for, right? Anyway, if you're getting into a small deal and you have no idea what you're doing, I find that if the deal has, is 10 units or lower, you can probably self-manage it okay. And if it's 80 units or higher, you can get a property manager to handle it. Anywhere in the middle, I find is a tough deal for you to self-manage. It's, it's big enough that it's, it's hard for a beginner to, to really attack and get their hands around everything. And it's too small for a property manager to actually care about running it properly <laughs> because it's too small. It doesn't generate enough money, right? Uh, so what I find, and not only through, through experience that I've seen, uh, but also just from talking on the podcast that we do, is that for these smaller properties, it, it can be a bear. And that's why I recommend for, for students that get into our coaching program, learn the art of selling, raising money, and, and most importantly, bring something to the table. You can't just call up a syndicator and say, I want to be a general partner. You know how many of those phone calls I get? I mean, it's, it's crazy, but they bring no deals. They bring no money. Uh, like, it doesn't work that way. You need to, if you're going to call in, you better go in strong because there's plenty of people that want to be general partners. There's not enough people that have a solution. What does the other person need that you have? Do you have deals? Then present a deal. Hey, Mark, I have a deal. I have a line on a 200 unit property. Oh, okay, tell me about it. It produces this amount of in income. It's, it does this cash on cash return. It does this IRR. What do you think about it? I already did the analysis. I'll send it over to you. So, so they, you do no work and all you have to do is give a, a yes or a no, right? That's helping someone, right? That's how you become a GP, right? Not just throwing a deal at, at you and say, here, look at this. <laughs> That's not how you do it. I see. I see. So Scott Todd, what are your thoughts? I gotta tell you, man. Like we we deal with a lot of we deal with a lot of um, people in different investment strategies, and I'm just sitting here. Honestly, I'm just sitting here. And I'm thinking, like, this is honestly like what, one of the reasons why I love land is because I really don't have to do that much analysis to a property, right? Like, right. it just seems like such a brain, like so much brain function taking place. Man, it seems like a it's sexy. Multifamily sexy, but man, it seems like a lot of work. I don't know, Mark. That's just what I'm thinking. It's certainly not for us because we've been so spoiled, but I can imagine if you're sitting in a cubicle at Procter and Gamble and you, and you, you can relate to Augustino's story, a guy who, you know, had a good income, had a good job, but was able to break out of it. Like if he can do it, you, you can do it. It's just a matter of will and education. And then, you know, embracing the suck, being comfortable with being uncomfortable. It's hard to ask somebody for $100,000. It's hard to find a good deal with a good cap rate in a competitive market. You have to hustle. It's hard to learn internal rate of return, cash flow, net operating expenses, net operating income. These, you know, this whole new vocabulary of multifamily, you've got to learn it and you've got to analyze it and you've got to be willing to make mistakes because due diligence on a $50 million building is going to be very different than say due diligence on a million dollar, uh, you know, fourplex or something like that. So that being said, if Augustino can do it, you can do it. So that's right. I think, unless obviously there's something about you that makes you special that we're not seeing. Like, is there something about you yeah. that gives you an advantage in the marketplace versus other operators? Uh, yeah, other people I mean, I would, want to do this. Yeah, I would say that uh, I'm very, very competitive. I like to win. So that's, and that's always been there from when I was a kid. But I, I think that the power of not giving up is, is one thing. I mean, there, there's been times in my life 
that we're not so good. Um, you know, and, and I, I won't go into that, but it, things, things are really bad and you start contemplating your whole life as a whole. And it was, it got really bad at, at one point. Right. But, uh, I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't give up, you know, I kept on grinding through it and there's that, but in addition, we've all been conditioned that after you finish school, where they've, where you're, you're at a place that you don't want to be again at school and you're told to study subjects they have no interest in, in some cases, to read these books they don't want to read in the first place and, and train and study and study for, for some, some sort of grade that means, again, nothing to you. And then once you're done, pencils down, I'm going to work now and never open up a book ever again. I was one of those guys. And I'm sure, again, this is, there's plenty of people out there that did the same thing. I stopped the self-development track. I stopped improving, right? Sure, I got the bonuses at work. I got the raises, got meetings, got real life experience, but that's it. And everyone's doing that, right? How do you outcompete that? How do you win deals? Well, you got to be more interesting. How do you get more interesting? How do you get, how do you hold people's attention? You train, you study, you know history, you know the arts, you know how to sell, you know, you know, how, you know about your craft. So that when you're talking to a broker or you're at a meeting talking to an investor that has, let's say they have a, they, they love a certain, a certain artist, you can talk about that artist because you, you just wrote a book about it last week. How about that, right? So it's a commitment to studying and training, right? That, which, I, which, I, which I've been doing for the last five years now. Uh, reading a book a week. I listen, I either listen to or read a book a week right now. I'm just finishing up uh, the book about Elon Musk and I'm very inspirational. Right. But Ashley uh, Vance book. Say again. Yes. The, yes. The Ashley, Ashley Vance. Yeah, yeah. I love that book. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's a great. Book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, but when you read that book or listen to it, I mean, he went through a lot of stuff. He went through a lot of stuff, but he never gave up. He never gave up. You finish that one. You can feel like you can do anything at that point. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Scott Todd, what, what are your thoughts? You know, man, I, I'm just telling you, like, I think that there's, I mean, I, Mark, we like, I'm a lifelong learner, right? Like I'm always learning. I think that that's a big key to this thing is, is always be curious about, you know, the opportunities that are there. Keep learning, you know, and uh, I think that you can achieve whatever you want to achieve as long as you keep growing as a person. Once you stop, stop growing, man, then you pretty much locking yourself into where you are right, right then and there. So yeah. keep growing, keep learning, keep applying things. And, you know, Mark, it's pretty cool because um, I see a lot of people go through flight school, you know, on a regular basis. And it's always fun for me when I see like older adults going through flight school, cause it's like, man, they still are learning, right? Like they're still there. They're still engaging. Like don't, don't, don't settle. Like keep, keep fighting to create the, the lifestyle that you want, the passive income that you want. Find, find the avenue, find the vehicle that you want and let it rip. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. You know, and, and that's probably the best way to sum it up is never stop learning, commit, yeah, you know what? We we have a I have a book list. I give it out for free. Listen, listen, watch the or listen to the books, read the books, however you take it in. Commit to learning something new every week, right? Uh, not just podcasts. That's one thing. Listen to an expert on on uh, you know entrepreneurship, right? Uh, get inspired by listening to a life story like a guy from Elon or like a guy like Elon or, or Thomas Edison or Einstein or one of these guys that went through a lot of bad stuff and yet came out successful. They get inspired, you know, different things like that. Uh, I, I'm not, I, there's people that are life learner, lifelong learners, but, you know, I think that it, that's also been squelched, especially when you finish school. You know, many people, many people choose not to do that. You know, I mean, I, I was one of them. I was one of them. You know, I, I didn't think it was that important, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, today knowledge is abundant. You can literally learn anything about anything. What's scarce is the will yeah. to learn anything about anything because we can be so easily distracted now. It's unbelievable. Scott Tato mentioned a new show on Netflix. I'm like, oh, but you've got to have that, that discipline to... Um, avoid the distractions and, and really keep growing in, in those ways. Um, not to say that, you know, Scott doesn't have amazing Netflix recommendations. You can do both, but you got to make time for both. You can't just, 
um, you know, binge watch his, his favorite shows. So, um, Augustino, as we get to books, because I am going to ask you for tip of the week, but um, if I was going to really get serious about learning about multifamily syndication, are there any books you'd recommend that I would start with right now? You know, um, not when it comes to syndication. It's the reason why I say that is because it all starts with the mindset first, right? I find that that many people that come out to our live events, for instance, I talk to them every almost every day for that matter. Um, they they have the will, they have the knowledge, they know where to go, they listen to the podcast, yet they don't do it. They don't take the action, right? So for me. The book, say my, my book list that I mentioned a second ago, it's all about applying the, the, the whatever, the action to, to, make, to make it happen, right? So getting, get, becoming familiar with, the, maybe it's the terminology and all that stuff. That's important. You got to know that. You got to be able to speak the language. But before that, before you can do all that stuff, you got to change the mindset. It's the mindset that's broken. You have the engine that's disengaged in a transmission. You have no idea. Like, no one's actually taking action to do, to, to move the needle. That's the hard part. That's, that's where, that's why people that come out to the meetups, they've been coming for over a year and they've never actually bought a single house until one day, actually this happened uh, a few months ago at one, at one of our meetups, uh, the husband and wife come in and they're, they're like, we want to get into real estate, but you know, we're, we're kind of scared. They've been coming for over a year. And I said, guys, listen, buy anything that cash flows, buy it. When, I, when you come back here next month, you better have a deal. I almost threatened them. They came back and they got a deal. They were like, oh my God, the, the tenant came to us and they came right to our door and they knock on our door and they handed us money. I'm like, that's how it works. Go do it again. You know, so, but that's what it took. It took for them to really believe in themselves to actually pull the trigger, right? That's what it was, you know? And as far as books are concerned, for me, it was Seneca on, on the shortness of life. That's, that was the book that really, that really pushed me into, into believing. It's like, hey, hey, you know, I'm not going to live for it forever. I'm not on this planet forever. I'm here for a short period of time. I got to make it count. I, I'm not here forever. And it's one of our cognitive biases that, that run in this, a software in our heads. And we think that's, that all this bad stuff's going to happen to someone else. It'll never happen to me. No, we're... we're we have, we have a time limit. We have an expiration date. Everyone listening to this has an expiration date and it's up to us to make, to make a decision, to take massive action, to make our lives count and to make whatever we have in our head in terms of dreams, we've got to make it real. It's up to us. No one else is going to do it for you. No one else I love is it. it. I love Stoke philosophy as well. So Augustino, we're at that point now in the podcast, where we're going to ask you for your tip of the week, a website, a resource, a, another book, something actionable, for the auto passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What do you got? You know, I got, I got something for your listeners, actually. The, the, the two biggest things that people often complain about is they don't know how to raise money and they, don't, they can't find deals. So I'm like, I'll tell you what, I'll give you two free eBooks <laughs> to do just that. So if they text the word freedom to 202-410-4202, you get those two eBooks for free. Download them, read them, and learn, right? And, and, and apply is, is, is key, absolutely key. You know, so that, that, is, that is a great resource to actually get started if you're afraid. You know, help, help build that, that knowledge you need to really be successful in your business. That's the baseline right there. All right, fantastic. Before we get to Scott Todd's tip of the week, I just want to remind everybody, just like what Augustine was saying, that taking action is hard. Well, what if we combined knowledge with taking action? What if you had Scott Todd for 16 weeks taking you up that mountain of land investing, making you mail, making you market, making you find deals, making you start earning those returns of 300 to 1,000 percent on your land deals? Well, if you are want to learn more, just go to landgeek.com forward slash training and learn more about flight school and how to get up that mountain quickly, safely, and efficiently with someone who's done it literally thousands of times. Scott Todd, what's your tip of the week? Mark, uh, I would recommend that uh, if, if like talking to people is a problem, and a lot of times it's a problem for people within, I don't know, every community, there's always the, um, the introverts. 
check out this book. It's How to Talk to Anyone, 92 Little uh, Tricks for Big Success in Relationships. Uh, it's a pretty good book. That's a good book. That's a really good one. Wow. Fantastic. Do you have just one tip, Scott, that you, from the book? Uh, like there's a lot, there's, you know, there's, there's different ways that you can like make that first, uh, impression. There's, you know, it's, there's a lot, read them. All right. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, how to talk to anyone. How to talk to anybody. All right. Well, my tip of the week is learn more about Augustino Pintus and multifamily investing. Just go to bulletproof cash flow dot com bulletproof bulletproof cash flow dot com also check out his books as well um we will have links to those texts augustino pintus are we good we're good man we're good scott todd are we good we're good mark just a reminder the only way we're going to get the quality of guests like an augustino pintus from bulletproof cash dot com is if you do us three little favors you got to subscribe you got to rate you got to review the podcast send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. We're going to send you for free the $97 Passive Income Launch Kit course, as well as the new wholetailing course, How to Double Your Money, 30 Days or Less. All right, Scott, let's do this. One, two, three, let's Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. All right. Thanks, everybody.